Okay, so what we're gonna do here is you land at the uh, at the pole, and in this case, you want to land in the field right next to it uh, because that, that's where the landing out landable uh, the landing option is. And it looks to me like most people have done that uh, more or less. And now we'll go off to the next one and do the same at the golf course. And then you you know, and that's the fields at the base of the ridge by the upper reservoir by the model airplane field, the former model airplane field, as being kind of where we normally will, um, you know, where we kind of, we, we consider those to be very important landing options. When you are uh, flying the local bridge, if you are not high enough to make it back, that's where you're going to be landing. Um, and if you're going to be flying the ridge, it's very, very important to be comfortable with the prospect of landing there. The golf course is not a place where we typically land. It's not some place that we, you know, it's been very rare that anyone's landed there. And Bobby Templin has landed the driving range in the 123 sometime, like a long time ago. I mean, it's happened before, but generally, you're if you if the ridge is not working so well, if you're not very happy, then you just you really want to stay and glide of the fields by the model airplane field. That being said, once you get out of glide there, the golf course is a viable landing option, and so. Uh, you know, we will land there if you know, we if you're if you get into trouble. Um, and so that's going to be the next place we'll go. Daniel, do you recommend the end of the wind that long field that goes straight to the north on the uh, east end? It wasn't on your slideshow. Which one? I were so like, it's like PJ. I'm fairway. looking at a long fairway on where on the golf course or where? Yeah, on the golf on the golf course, the very east side. Oh, on the uh, like on the like on the land side of the of the river. Yeah. Uh, yep, that's a doable place to go. Uh, I think that the the golf course has a little bit more of an open approach into it, so. If you had something like a 126, you might even prefer landing on the Pennsylvania side. But, you know, you are you might do better, uh, you know, but I, I I sort of figured that if I'm falling off, then I'm going to be looking at the main island first, and then if I can come up with a better alternative, I'll do that at the time. You know, a golf course really isn't that great of a landing option. Uh, I mean, it's a place where you can pull off a safe landing, but it's not a place where you'd want to do it. So... You know, and, and this this goes for when you're flying the local ridge. You know, you, you don't want to be here unless uh, you're, you're reasonably confident the bridge is working. And also, if you're coming around the water gap, I mean, it's a place where you can go if you get into serious trouble. But that being said, you know, uh, try to avoid putting yourself that low that you have to use it. Hey Daniel, what do you think about uh, Worthington State Park down there? Too small. I mean, uh, the, it used to be much more open in the way in the olden days when the people used to land there. But I don't think it's, I mean, conceivably in a 126, maybe you could do it, but I, I don't think you can do it in a high performance ship. Thanks. to kind of get a running commentary you know i'm landing at the golf course now if you got ahead you know you can just wait for a minute or two and then i'm going to go off to the next one so daniel do you actually touch down and hit the queue yeah i just top and land and you know and try to do a full stall landing You know, touch on the wheel brake and stop as quick as I can. And then it says I landed. And I'm off to the next one. What is the wheel brake key in Condor? Period. So, 
I'm gonna go with the the illustration for. Hey, <laughs> I'm glad, Len. Uh, the illustration for the next one is if we're gonna be crossing the water gap alone, and this is not a, you know, not a really good place to be. So the trouble with crossing the water gap low, or if you get any trouble there, is there's no place to land on the upland side. And so, you know, you have to be absolutely sure that you can make it off the back into at least of the one of the two fields that are available. I selected the field that I tend to prefer a little bit. I, it's, I call it the pump house field. Um, the nice thing about this field, it's a little bit bigger and you, once you get off the back, you're, you're on a, it's just a dog leg. I mean, you just aim right at it and land in it. And, that the, and you, there's only one way you can go into it. It's uphill to the southwest. Um, and that tends to be a reasonable direction to land in. The trouble with it is it's got three pump houses and it's got a power line to each one. So it, when you, if you want to land in it, you got to basically clear the first line and then dip down and try and then, you know, and be sure that you bring, bring it down after the first power line really come down quick and then land it's, um, afterwards. If you know where the power lines are and you can see them on Google Earth, uh, it's a perfectly it's perfectly manageable. And also, I mean, you can get pretty much any glider in there. The, another option there is called Slateford Farm, but that one is better for a 126, maybe, uh, or it's doable in a 126. People have landed there. I've landed there, but it's I think that the in a high performance ship, it's just a little marginal. But the uh, the, the, the field that we're going to go for right now, I think that's pretty doable for just about anything, if you, if you prepare for it. Daniel, have you ever landed at Pump House? No. I've, it's been scouted uh, by Cookie, um, and I've, you know, I've studied it at length. I haven't, I haven't landed there. I've landed at Slaveford Farm on Southeast State, though, and it's a little intimidating. But if you got to do it, yeah. But I'd say I'd go for I, at this point. I'd go for the pump house field. One important thing is you're coming in and doing these landings. You want to keep a fairly steep approach. Maybe throw in a slip. These approach, you know, you want to come in fairly steep because you want to have a pretty good visibility as you're coming into these places. You can actually see the first pump house, and you can see where the power line would be. The second power line, if I'm not mistaken, is right by that little road. So, Eric? Uh, yeah, you're doing okay. The S turns are okay, but you but you see you have, you have a little bit of a tailwind component going in here, right? And what you would want to do is you want to have a, a you would want to be slipping to the right for the crosswind, right? Instead of to the left, and that way you get the you know then you end up being able to go straight. Oh, cool. No worries. Where are you streaming it, dude? It's fine. So Did we're... you go to Twitch? Oh, <laughs> that's huh. interesting. But that's, uh, but you, you can actually even see the little, little houses, you know, the little pump houses um, that are in there, and you can kind of visualize what the power line would be. So now, you know, we're heading along, we're at the microwave tower, and we're in a very unhappy place because the wind today is 290, 295, not very strong. And this is a pretty scary place to be because you're looking at uh, coming around that little spur in front of us. Uh, pretty much the only out here, and I'll actually exercise it even though it's, I could call it an addendum, is you can get to 
a um, you can get to the hang glider landing zone if you leave right here, but it would not be very pretty. This is a you're you know like and you 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 can not so much in a room or even you know but like something like a 126 or a high performance ship you can just just make it even through the rotor in the sink. Is it the dirt field ahead or yep. the grass? Yep, it's the big dirt field, and that's the hang glider landing zone. Gotcha. to run out of it, actually. <laughs> but notice, I mean, these fields are... The, I, I, the, the hang glider LZ is a little bit on the short side. It's about a thousand feet long. And you got to clear the trees. It's just not all that pretty, um, but it's doable. I don't consider it doable for like a grobe or even the glider that I fly nowadays. Q. You just press Q. F one. Or control F1 if it's if you really screwed it up. Well, that's fine. You can click F8, by the way, if you want to watch someone else. You can just park yourself on the ridge. So I'm back on the ridge. So that little spur where we dropped off the back there and went for that field, um, that's that you know that little spur is where Philip got himself into trouble when the wind went to like 275 and not all that strong. And then you know and if you and I mean in his case that really in a 126 that's just a little bit of a stretch to get there. But that's one of the reasons why that section is so tricky. That the section between the water gap and pretty much Fox Gap, where I'm at right now, is one of the trickier parts of the whole ridge system, particularly when it's, uh, when it's westerly. So, it, you gotta be really careful here. Once you get to, probably right about where I'm at, then finally there's a nice field off, uh, to the, uh, you know, that's available to us, and that's the cord field that we'll, we'll land in. The trouble with this field, though, is that it favors very strong, I mean, you, you have to land to the northeast. The slope is too. Uh, it just has way too much slope, and it's got a little. It's got a little power line, which is really no factor. But you, if you fell off into it on a day like today, you would need to land in it uh, heading downwind, which is not, you know, not terribly pleasant. But it's doable. It's long enough to do it. Good to go. If you had to land uh, with a tailwind, you're you would want to give yourself considerably more room uh, on the upwind side, because that you don't want to be bunched up against the field as you turn final.
Nope, it's right over, uh, which one? The, the one where I'm landing now, Hornfield? Oh yeah, sure. I'm making my, uh, my base leg now. Is this your first time landing there, Daniel? Oh no. I've landed there before, as a Steve. I've landed in uh, three of the fields, or three of the places we're landing in today. Maybe four, even. I've landed in model airplane before. So when you land in these fields, you want to land uh, with the stick all the way back, you know, and then when you land, you know, with the st you have full air brakes and uh, full, you know, and uh, and you want to be hauling on the wheel brake. You want to, and the idea is, is that when you actually land, in, in an off-field landing situation, you want to stop, and you want to stop as quick as you can. You're, you're, uh, you don't know the surface, you don't know if there might be any rocks or anything like that. I mean, a cornfield like that, if it's if it's cut, you know, you're, the surface is pretty reliable. But that being said, there's no reason to uh, be flying any longer than you need to be. Once you land, you, you want to land with as little energy as possible, and then you want to stop as quick as you can. When it comes to, also, among other things, you, you know, you don't want to, you know, you don't care about convenience or anything like that. You land the glider right in the middle of the field, in the safest place that you could possibly land it. And just, and then once you get out, then you deal with it. Um, you know, have, that, that's between you and the crew afterwards. When you land there, just aim for the middle, make a nice steep approach. Um, when you are about to land, you know you don't you don't have to worry about making a picture perfect landing. No one's watching. No one cares. You want to land uh, as slow as you can. And uh, that way, if you if you do hit anything or if anything doesn't work out, which is unlikely. If you pick a decent field like that, but that way you're you're going as slow as you can. Now beyond that field, I mean, really, there isn't all that much in terms of landing options. I mean, there's a couple places you can kind of land in behind behind Fitch's Quarry, but I don't really I don't look at them with all that much uh, enthusiasm. Uh, but but the next place we're going to land in is Cherry Valley. It used to be an airport, it used to be a little private strip, it's not an airport anymore, but so far it seems to be perfectly landable. There's also a field on the far side of it, so and if, if we're so unfortunate as to that field not becoming landable, I mean, there, there are places to land beyond it. Um, but so far, it seems to still stay perfectly landable. Um, you're, I landed in, in it uh, twice, both times I landed to the northeast, but um, the days had little to no wind, and one day was more northerly. I imagine you could still you could still land uh, going southwest bound, but it's a little bit trickier because you don't have as clear of an approach. But uh, I would say on a day like today, uh, with that strong, strongly, you know, like a pretty two, like a wind that's 290, I'd say I'd probably prefer to land to the southwest. This is uh, th this field is particularly handy, especially when you're. You really, it's pretty rare that you would fall off into it the direction that we're heading into it, but if you come around wind gap a little bit too low, and you can see how flat it is here, and that's when, that's one of the times I landed. One of the times I landed there was a th just a thermal day, and it was the best place to land, but one day I landed there was a, uh, a rich day, and I just botched the transition heading uh, northeast bound on a northerly day, and I just fell right off the ridge. By botched, what do you mean? 200 feet too low? Um, yeah, thereabouts. It was a 126. <laughs> You know, 
but the theme is you're keeping your speed up, you have lots of air brakes, maybe even a little bit of a slip on final, and certainly to kind of account for the crosswind. And that this field is a perfectly flat field. Good job, Lynn. Good job, Greg. So the next field we're heading for is called the, uh, we call it the One Tree Field, for uh, because that's very descriptive of this particular field. And it's also another field that's placed in a really, really handy area. It's, if you're making the crossing over to Wind Gap uh, across, then you know, that's just very clearly, you know, your eyes just steer right toward it. It's a beautiful, beautiful field um, and plenty big, no problems, you know, really good place to land. Very often it's all, I mean, the other nice thing is it's flat and it's position more or less into the wind so it's just a uh, it's a wonderful landing option when it's not in corn when it's in corn half the year then you know you're not so happy but often it is pretty landable one thing you do not want to do is stare at the tree you want to land on either side of it don't land you know, don't aim at the tree because then you're going to hit it When you're landing into the wind, you want to really keep your base leg more up close, close and personal to the field, uh, but not so close that you crowd in your approach. You want to, but you don't want to get away from the field and hit a lot of sink. You know, you just want to, you know, have a reasonably high approach and then, you know, full spoiler, maybe a little bit of a slip. Are you here with us? Daniel, I didn't hear, um, did, is there a preferred way to go into the one tree field? Not really. I think it's reasonably flat, but you would want to land into the wind. So you'd, yeah, I, I've hardly ever contemplated going into it southeast bound just because, I mean, conceivably, if you're landing, if this has a southeast day, you might do that. But I, I've always considered just landing into it northwest. Thanks. The, we're, we're not going to land here just because the next field is a bit more interesting, I think. But the uh, there's a field right off our right. This is a gas line that goes through the area. And um, there's a field that's interesting. It doesn't look quite so nicely defined here. I'm not sure why. But um, in real life, if you look at that, I mean, it would look perfectly landable. I mean, I think that they were doing some construction there five years ago and it's now turned back into a field but where that power line where that uh, gas line cuts through that big open area you can land to the northeast in that field but um, and it's a pretty important field to note because that's the last field for a while and it gets pretty unlandable for a little while there's one field that I have picked out and some of the hang glider guys have landed in it. I don't think any sailplanes ever landed in it, but I call it the emergency field. 
and you can see it uh, where the, at the next pole. And I think I think it's a really important landing option because it's pretty much square in the middle of the worst of the treed in area. And so if you consider this a landing option, well, you've cut the unlandable portion uh, a tremendous amount because if you're willing to land, you know, essentially the truly unlandable area that we're flying in is only this little tiny section where we can't quite reach that field and we can't quite reach the gas line field behind us. Whereas if you don't consider that landing option to be viable, well then you're going through all of this unlandable area until you get to the ski area where the next pole is. So, uh, kind of thinking through this landing option and if you really, if you're okay with it, then you, you know, you've essentially cut down the unlandable section by a lot. Um, a section of it, the, the difficulty is it's it's uphill and you have to land, it's very uphill, it's a lot of slope, and you have to land downwind going into it. It's perfectly long, uh, but it's also hard to see, it's hard to find. It's even harder to see in real life, and yet you pretty much get right directly. Um, so here you can kind of even see a little bit of a glimpse, but only right about now would you, would you be seeing it. You know, you would, um, you know, you, you have to really be prepared to go for it. There, there's a couple sections to it. Um, there's, I, um, I suppose you could conceivably land in the very early part of the first section, um, but it, there's a li there's a little rock outcropping between the low part, uh, between the thin part and the longer wire part. I've always kind of figured I'd make my approach over the low part there and then land in the wider part beyond the ro that little rock wall. Now, landing up slope is tricky, because especially with the tailwind, because you have to make sure you keep enough airspeed when you make your flare. Same deal for you, Phil. So Daniel, any reason why uh, Condor puts you in this massive death dive when you start back out with Q? Oh, you just stalled. That's why you just don't have any air, any airspeed. So if you hit Q with airspeed, it keeps your airspeed. Gee, I thought it was a winch launch gone bad. <laughs> Oh, 
right. So the next field is uh, the fields at the base of the, the ski area. And there, there are two fields there on this side of the ski area. There's also one that I didn't note on the far side that's pretty reasonable. But uh, those two fields that are over there, they're the, on the first viable uh, landing options as far as I'm concerned. Uh, beyond what I call the emergency field, and I'm, Schwartz definitely landed a 126 in one of them. Uh, he landed across the furrows going northwest. Um, I, I mean, it's doable, um, but I think it's probably better to land either southwest or northeast. There are two fields there, um, one that favors more of a landing to the northeast, and one of them that favors a landing to the southwest. And the one that we're going to land in that favors to the southwest has a little, a uh, little power line in the middle of it. It's okay. You can basically dip down uh, in the early part of the field, and you're well below it uh, if you end up flying a field below it or landing under it or anything like that. But you have to know exactly what the power line is, um, and you can see it very distinctly in Google Earth and when you fly by there. By the way, like this exercise, what we're doing, um, once you know where the fields are and you should if you ever uh, decide to go cross country uh, but then when you fly by these fields you you know like you know when we're going and doing these kind of long flights i'm always paying attention to them and like every time i every day that i fly by there i look over and say oh look at that you know this field you know that the, the crops are going higher and maybe it's not gonna be so landable in the future you know like you're constantly assessing and reassessing and you and you think through the approaches into these fields. So when you're, um, after you've kind of figured out how you would do it, then every time you look at them, then you kind of play it back in your mind. So the field that we're going to be landing in is just to the southwest of the pole. The uh, the field the, right behind the tree line, just the northeast of the pole, that one favors a landing to the northeast. Schwartz landed across it in that kind of little green section uh, to the northwest in a 126, um, and that that's I think that's reasonably doable. Uh, but I'm not too eager. To do that personally because you end up getting bunched in on final. I mean, you'd end up using quite a bit of it, even in a 126, because uh, you're going, uh, you're, you're making your final along this kind of downslope. But uh, my preferred way to land from this direction would be to make my approach over uh, the field and then clear the tree line. Then um, it is to you see we're just like two trees it's to then get into ground effect and land in that longer portion on the far side actually no it's no short than that it's the you would, the power line is along that little road where greg just landed so what i would do is i clear the tree line then dip down, get under the power line, and land um, beyond it. Oof. It's shorter, it's flatter. No, 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 never mind. I, I messed you guys up. The, this is the field right below me. I'll show you guys. Sorry about that. This is, you know, you don't want to land in the, where the, the line of the marker is. The field, this is the field right here. The, you go across, across this one, under, you know, there, and then, and the power line is beyond this point. It's right here. want to 
the land right where I am. And that's that's the field I noted. And again, it's it's flatter in real life. That said, even though um, it would be flat, there's an interesting discussion here as to how you would land on a cross slope, and it's not so not so easy. And what you would do is you actually would want to land in a little bit of a turn. So what you would do is you would want to come in and angle to, you know, toward the upper part of the slope and keep your left wing low in this case. And you would land in a curve while keeping your left wing a little bit low and let your, and then you would want to kind of go uphill a little bit but while keeping your wing low and then sort of angle around the turn here. I don't consider this ski area to be remotely landable. That said, there is uh, there is a nice field beyond it, and I think that this is probably the best landing option in this area. You can land it in either direction. It's this long field. Uh, there's a discontinuity in the middle of it, so I would not land. You know, I would not plan to roll over the middle of it. Um, but what I would do is, you know, but it's definitely plenty long and it's plenty flat. I see the field that I'm referred to. You could also land the other way uh, if you're coming in from the other direction, which is very handy. I mean, it's perfectly lined up for a landing in either direction, and especially when you're coming in, uh, if, you're, if the ridge's not working so well, coming in off of Sladington, off of Lehigh Gap, that if you're coming this way, then that's a good place to go. Channel. After this point, the next good landing option is Sladington, and that's going to be beyond Lehigh Gap, and that's another uh, three or four miles or so, maybe five even, uh, beyond us. And as you can see, you know, if we were this low with this kind of westerly wind, with the wind that's you know right now it's what two, two ninety, and this section favors a three fifty wind, we would not be happy here one bit. Um, and so, if it's weak or if the wind gets a little bit more westerly, then those fields behind us are the much, the much, the. We're, we're making absolutely sure that we retain those landing options. And, you know, you can ride out the tailwind coming back. Now, if the wind, if the ridge is working, if it's, you know, it's kind of okay, then you can sort of float along. But then the next landing option is going to be beyond the gap. And I actually have landed at Slayton once uh, on a was thermaling along, but then I tried the ridge briefly and then landed there. It's a very nice little airport. You could, there are some places at the base of this ridge where you could conceivably maybe make a landing, um, but it would be really, really sketchy. I, I don't, I mean, it's kind of one of those things where you, you know, you probably like if you if you were if push came to shove you probably could find a little bit of a flat spot somewhere down there but um and most gliders you're looking at probably breaking it if you were to do that so you it's that that field behind us is by, by far the best bet and uh it's laden to the head of us
Does anyone remember why this area is uh, so deforested? Indeed. It's uh, zinc poisoned. Ha! <laughs> Does a pretty good job of killing all this stuff, that's for sure. So Slate and is gonna be right off the left, and then be on straight to the back, heading straight to the left. Um, the the runway is straight north and south, uh, but you know, I mean, you if you got if you were in a real pinch, I mean, you could land straight to the south, but you'd want to prefer. Uh, I mean, on a day like today, the straight pretty much straight west from the wind wouldn't make a difference, but um, but you know, typically you want to land to the north. One thing is, yeah, on a typical day when I'm flying here, I will often, at minimum, I mean, I'll always just look at slating because it's a fun thing to look at, but um, but there are airplanes that take off out of there very, very rarely, you know, you know but nonetheless, when they do, it's worth uh, paying attention to the fact that, you know, you might have you might have an airplane climbing out of slating to kind of going right through the gap. It's not unusual for that to happen. So I'll land long to give you guys plenty of room behind me. I'm coming through the gap to make it realistic. Sure. Oh, this is a very handy landing option for us. It's just perfectly positioned. I think when I landed there, I landed on the grass, but, I mean, honestly, in any glider you're flying, landing on the pavement is not a problem at all if you can land it straight. You know, it's... I, I, I wouldn't have any hesitation landing on the pavement in an off-field landing situation. Now, again, landing in a less familiar area on a windy day, you know, you want to keep your pattern tight and fast. Not, you know, not, you don't want to crowd yourself in either, but you want to stay in the upper part of the, of the energy curve. Pretty sure that Sladington has uh, runway lights. It's not a problem if you ever have to land on pavement with, uh, you know, right with runway lights. Uh, what you want to do is you just, you know, you just land straight, keep your wings level, and then um, ideally, you know, it, 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 if it's it, 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 you know, having trouble keeping your wings level, for example. Uh, you're gonna end up, you know, your wing's gonna go off more, you know, to one side, and even that is okay. But what you want to do is just make sure that your wing comes down in the middle section between the lights. No problem. I mean, you, when your wheel brake works and things like that, um, you, you won't have any difficulty doing that. Um, but what you want to do is, you, one thing to remember is, you do not want to stare at the light. If you end up, uh, you know, what you want to do is, you want to fixate your eyes section in the middle between the two sections of lights uh, and if you do that you know when you wing, when your wing comes down and and you and you stop you, you'll, you'll you'll stop in the middle between the sections of lights but if you fixate your eyes on one of the lights you're going to end up careening toward it 
Ask me how I know. This is why we don't go through this gap very low on a westerly day. Let's see how this is going to work out. Hey Daniel, I landed in Slating 10 years ago. It was a good option. But once you, um, on Northwest Day, once you head down that gap towards the airport, you're not coming back to the ridge. That's absolutely true. Who, who was that? Uh, uh, Chip. Uh, oh, Chip. Oh, sorry, I didn't recognize your voice. Yeah, no, I mean, when you drop off the back of a ridge like that, in any situation, you are near to completely committed. You're not gonna, you know, you're just not gonna dig out. You know, um, and in general, in, in, once... With these ridge situ ridge landouts, um, you're when you fall off the ridge, when you find yourself in a situation where you're really thinking about taking advantage of these options, I mean, you have to be pretty decisive. Leaving the ridge a little bit late is much much scarier. Like you know, if there if things are not working, if the day if the day is more westerly, if the conditions are just not working out, if the earlier you pull the plug, uh, the better you're going to be. If you leave the ridge 150 feet above ridge top going 50 knots, your you know risk level, I mean, or 200 feet or whatever your margins are, right? Uh, your risk level is not going to go up a lot. If you're going to leave, try to work your way off the ridge and sink below ridge top when it's not working, then that gets you into really dicey situations like you know what got Bill Hansen killed last year, and you know, and so. You know, if, if it's not working, you want to go for these options. Now, when you leave, when you go for it, in all probability, you are done. You're not going to find anything. It's not impossible. I've dug out uh, once I've headed out into the valley, but if you're leaving the ridge, you're probably going to land out. And you, at least you should be 100% prepared for that. From here, the next landing option is pretty a good ways away, especially when it's westerly. But again, we have Slatington behind us, and we have the, the kind of the next cornfield ahead of us. And it works out such that you can make it there and just basically make a left turn and land straight, you know, straight for it. But, you know, one of the themes here, I mean, as, as you kind of, as we've been flying along from Wind Gap, is you notice that there, the landing options are, you know, very few and far between. They are there, and if you know them and you're prepared, I mean, there's only a couple to prepare for, really. But, um, you know, you're very, very committed to these places. And, you know, and if you're flying through there in the summertime, I mean, you're basically completely committed to landing there regardless of whatever the condition is. So even if they have crop, you know, and that's something that you have to be, you know, this is something that we're not comfortable with in normal flying. So if we're flying along on thermals, we would not be content with the, you know, the way we're going about these landing options. You know, this is pretty, a pretty marginal way to be going about cross-country flying. That being said, you know, kind of the reasoning here is that the likelihood of landing in these places is very low because you know, the ridge tends to work well and we tend to fly in days that are pretty reliable. And so you know, we kind of balance the risk of you know, the low likelihood of landing in these places against, you know, the, the possibility of them not being quite as good as we would otherwise accept. But um, nonetheless, I think that if you are prepared, then, you know, you can very much diminish the odds of getting hurt uh, or significantly damaging your glider. Um, that being said, you know, when you're, if you're going to be going into a field that's beyond a corner and you don't know its condition, you know, you, you may end up getting there and find that it's full of corn. And, you know, and you, you have to accept the fact that if you're going to, you know, that if it's the one and only place you can land, it might be full of corn, you'll have to deal with it. Um, and if you make a satisfactory landing, maybe you won't break the glider. 
but um, but the thing is, is it's not you know you, that that's just not something that we would gen typically accept in a normal landing situation. The field is the, that I actually have picked out is a little bit further to the south than the actual uh, place where I placed the turbine. It's a beautiful field, though. And I reckon it's, it's fairly flat. I, uh, I seem to remember that it's kind of favors a little... I mean, I think... I think it favors a little bit to land in the southwest, but you can land... I mean, there's plenty of fields here to land in the northeast. I, I, the, the field where we landed is the first field that you can get to uh, from Slatington. You know, there's a couple on landing options here. So, you know, if you're... And, and also, that's another kind of distinct thought. When you... You, you might have, a, like, a really particularly handy field picked out in your mind, or at least the nearest point. But if you have the altitude, once you get there, and if you look around you and you see that there might be a better option, you might be willing to uh, change your mind. There's something to, to make note of that, in general terms, that when you are doing most normal kind of cross-country flying, once you've committed to a field, you really you have to be very careful deviating from it. You know, you're, you're, you have a good chance of uh, doing yourself worse in when you go and you change your mind, like on, on final or something like that. But the thing is, is you know, again, kind of the theme here is these fields that we're landing in, I mean, and these situations in which we're landing in them, are not quite normal situations. I mean, falling off a ridge is damn near an emergency, and uh, and so you know we're you know we have kind of a different set of operational procedures for them. Like we're we're willing to kind of approach them a little bit differently. Uh, but that being said, the you know the risk level is much higher too, and that's also why uh, as we're flying along and we're looking at these options and we're thinking about how you would land there, that having that extra degree of preparation. Yeah, it could be the difference between making a safe, albeit, you know, tricky landing and basically making a critical mistake at the last moment. Hey, uh, Daniel, that was a good point about uh, selecting the fields in which you commit to it. Uh, Kilo Lima, Chloe Lombard, uh, changed his uh, Fairfield three or four years ago, maybe more, uh, changed it at the last minute, wound up uh, totaling his Diana. I'm not at all surprised by that. And I don't think that I've ever actually had a situation where, and I've landed out 50 or 51 times, and I don't think I've ever had a situation where I was, you know, like below 500 feet and changed my mind. Um, you know, once you get a sense as to what kind of the landing options are, and you know, when you look ahead and if it looks right, once you've trained yourself to recognize them, uh, you can recognize it pretty early. Um, that said, you know, with the with Rich, uh, you know, you're, uh, you know, you may well at some point find yourself like as you're gliding along into these options. I mean, you're not going to pull the brakes out, and if you get closer, you, then you look down, and then you can still glide out further in the valley. There might be another place to land. It, it still is worth considering reassessing them. But the, the the thing is, is as you're doing that, you're you're doing that at a very low altitude with not much time and energy to deal with. So, but that's kind of the nature of dealing with ridge flying. Like if we were to go and just, just drop off the back right now, you know, the, we're, we're not practicing that here because you would definitely find a field. But the thing is, is once you go off the back, you know, you're going to have to be picking a field in a hurry and you'll be doing all the, the selection while you're in the rotor being thrown around all over the place. And you know, and basically having to very quickly select the landing option. And that's also one of the reasons we kind of, kind of tend to prefer landing on the upward side if we can. So in the section that we're flying right now between from Snyder's, there's a couple landable fields off to the right, uh, and you can kind of they're not they're, none of them are great, but there there are several ones that are pretty doable. Um, you know, and you, I don't have any of them that are like I sort of when, when there's sections. Uh, there's more fields, then you, I basically, you know, I don't have, 
kind of a very strong a strict sense as to which one I'm going to land in. I'm just going to figure it out on the spot. I, uh, the ones I marked here are the ones that are kind of more critical. You know, ones where, you know, you're, you're, it's basically, if you're in trouble, that's where you're going to go. It's like you don't really have a choice. Now, yeah, at the base of Snyder's, you know, so this area gets a little bit sparse, and then at the base of Snyder's, there's a couple fields uh, that you can go into. All of them have slight complications. One, when you're heading, the one that we're heading for is the first field that you can land uh, to the southwest in it, uh, which is nice. I always like, you know, these, you know, if I'm heading southwest bound, I, I'd like a field in which I can land to the southwest if I can. That being said, this field that we're landing in, you probably, I'm, I'd have to check, but I'm pretty sure the slope favors that you have to land to, uh, to the south. So if it was a northerly wind, you wouldn't be quite as happy. Again, notice the fact that, you know, like, we're, we're kind of simulating falling off the ridge and heading into the, one of these kinds of fields, that, I mean, you're pretty much making a straight in into the field. You know, maybe a base to final, maybe an abbreviated pattern, but you're not doing a full pattern. You'd much, much, much prefer to be doing a full pattern into these fields if you could, but you can't in every situation. And, the, and that, that's the reason that we stress that you and also, generally, these fields are not all that long, you know, all of, and a lot of these fields in which we're landing, if you try to land going the other way, you know, you might get yourself in really serious trouble. You might end up overshooting the field. This particular one has a tree line, and you know you can, you know, you'd clear it, and then you'd have maybe about 12, 1300 feet long, you know, 12, 1300 feet of field to land it. So Len, I would say, you know, the well, it's not obvious, but I would be coming in considerably steeper because there's the tree line extends you know, beyond the point in which you're landing. And if you, and if, once you're back on the ridge, if you look back, you can actually kind of see why that is the landing option there. Because all the other ones are a little bit too short. There's a big power line up along that ridge. I mean, you really, you really can't land in any of those other fields. Um, if you're in a real bind and like right at that corner, you can it's land from your channel. Uh, uphill across the furrows there. But that would, you really don't want to land. You see, like where the, you see where the parallel lines are. Well, if you land across them, you you know have a good chance of breaking your undercarriage or something like that. This field uh, that's right off my right, it's plenty long, but it's got a considerable side slope. It's doable, but it's not great. There's a field, uh, a long field, way off our right that's dark uh, green. Um, if you look, kind of look where 309 heads into the town of Snyder's, um, and then just to the right, there's that big field. If you had enough height. That's probably where you would want to go, and that you know, and even though it looks kind of far away, uh, you're it's considerably lower than the ridge. You know, the terrain slopes down. Now, as we're heading along into here, we're very now we're going for the Snyder's jump, and we're considerably lower than we want to be. You know, we're down at 1,640 feet, and the ridge gets flat. And I'm doing this on purpose because I want to illustrate what happens when we fall off this ridge. And uh, this is something where that next uh, power, uh, where that next pole is, is actually a place I have landed in when I got through here too low once. 
the first landing option uh, is so actually the, there's a field right off my right that you can land in, um, and you can just but you'd have to go uphill. You'd have to land to the north, uh, sorry to the to the southeast. But it's that one's reasonably doable. There's also a field off my right. Um, it's about 1.30 o'clock or so, and you can land in that field um, southwest bound. So now you, this is now you guys see why we don't want to be here this low. And then once you get a little bit further, what happens is it flattens out even more, and then you actually have to go a little bit more to the left in order to get to the working part of the ridge, and that is just really, really, really not fun. And that's how I fall off. I fell off of it. I was only about 20, 30 feet low. This is actually one of the really extraordinary places on a ridge where 20, 30 feet makes all the difference. If you're a little bit, if you're like another wingspan higher, you will fly along the little escarpment and you'll be okay. If you're, I mean, not to say that you, anyone really should be really slow. I mean, it's a really dicey spot. But like right here, I'm a little bit too low. May, oh, who knows, maybe I can just, just barely make it there. But I was here in a 126 once, and it was, and I said, heck with it, and I went for the field that I planned out for myself. There were two pilots in the club in 126s that kept going, regardless, and they ended up making it most of the way to the next turn point, and one pilot ended up made landing in a 500-foot-long field, and, like, he hit a tree on the way in, and that actually helped him because see, that little sapling took in some of the energy and then he landed in like ground loop before the very end of the field. It's just insanity. Um, but actually this, if you can believe it, it would it would actually would work. But in a, I was in a 126 right about here and I said, nope, this ain't working. And I just hung a right and followed the, you know, basically the, the terrain out. And I can assure you, this is not fun to do. So you, you really don't want to be here this low. The field that we're heading for is a, uh, it has a box in it, and apparently that's federal land. It's really odd, um, but in any case, that box is never uh, open. When I landed there, I ended up, I mean, I was under significant stress, and I ended up uh, forgetting to slip into it, and I actually ended up uh, landing in the box overshooting and went into the hay on the far side and did a gentle ground loop in the 126 didn't do anything to it but uh, it's a perfectly reasonable field there's a couple other ones in the area but that seems to be kind of the best one and I'm and Bobby has actually also landed there to my knowledge but that box is very 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 distinctive you'll, you'll see it Once you get beyond this section, then you can get to the high part of the ridge over here. And we call this uh, the rocks. Or, and, uh, and then the ridge starts working again. There's a couple places to land. Um, you, you can fall off the back very easily in this area. Very nice fields in the back, even an airport called Quattro Vientos. Um, but then, uh, and then once you get a little bit further, right about to here, once you get toward Hawk, that valley drops off, and so you can get pretty quickly to a glide to within gliding distance of the fields at the base of Hawk Mountain. So if you're 
but uh, that's kind of where your options are. You can either go off the back or just sort of uh, linger on. But in the immediate valley below us, the landing options are pretty, pretty dismal. Did any of you guys look at the slideshow or um, look at the rich map before we did this? Yeah, I took a look at the slideshow. It's PJ. It's a really nice job. And are any of these options familiar? Uh, very. It's actually really cool because, you know, I, I've actually never, well, aside from the ones I've landed in, <laughs> you know, in real life, I've actually never use Condor to actually land and tour in all of these options like this, and um, I think that's really cool. Yeah, I've got them on my iPad next to me. Awesome. So there are a couple places um, right off our right that, you know, kind of are kind of doable. I haven't really looked at them all that close because it just seems to me that, I've, I mean, I've just never been in a situation where they are terribly useful to me. Like from this point, I am really looking at, you know, that th this is a pretty high valley you off our right. From your and it just feels to me that the landing options uh, at the base of Hawk are much preferred to me. Um, that being said, I mean, there are a couple places you can sort of land in there. It just seems to me that, you know, like if I have an extra 400 feet on the valley, I might as well use it to get to slightly friendlier options and have a better chance of finding the thermal. So, it's, um, I just typically don't, you know, look at the options off my right with a lot of interest. Hey Daniel, why didn't you go around those knobs to the right? Um, I typically go around it uh, heading northeast bound, uh, but heading southwest bound I typically go over it. It just seems to be about the same. This Molly's coming up on the left? Uh, Molly, no, Molly's nipple is, that's Bobby's name for it, is it by Snyder's. It's a little north of Snyder's. So we're well past it. The rocks? Uh, no, actually, it's, apparently there's a whole lot of Molly's nipples out west, and you figured we had to have one out east. Okay, I placed the turn point a little bit off the field that we're getting to is a little bit to the right. You see that big red barn? That's where we're going. That field before it, it's actually a tree farm. Every once in a while, certain sections are landable. The one closest to the river, there's a section there that uh, uh, Boris actually has landed in, in a discus. But the thing is, is this uh, section is not uh, consistently landable. Whereas the field that we're heading to is a cultivated field. It's in a corn field or something like that. another field beyond it that's a little bit nicer, but I mean, again, this is the first viable field. Not aligned, you know. You're. Th this is not like an airport with a runway. I mean, you have to 
really give give some thought as to you know which section you're going to go for. Sometimes you might even come in at a diagonal and then straight down at the end. You know, you might then like do like kind of kick it over like a, at a 20 degree angle at the very end. So there's all sorts of different possibilities. I grew up in the Midwest where every field is big and rectangular, but it's not <laughs> the case here. Not at all. All right, guys. Well, good job. You know, that was kind of the sort of uh, a little taste of what it's like to fly and, you know, and some of the landing options we have at the base of the ridge. This is not all of them. Um, and also, it's not to say that, you know, like, this is perfectly acceptable behavior, like, in a, you know, going and, and, and using these options, it's, you know, pretty dicey. Uh, but that being said, you know, that I think that if you know exactly where they are, you have your approach planned out, and you are constantly aware of what your options are and how you're going to deal with